Well, good morning. It's good to see you this morning and glad that you are here. Glad that we get to come and we get to worship together. It's such a, always such an honor and a blessing to be able to do that if you're visiting with us. Uh, thank you for being here. Uh, in the back of your pew is a card. If you'll fill that out and take it to the Welcome Center, we'll be glad to give you a gift uh, in exchange for that card. Uh, so we're looking forward to uh, tonight and excited about uh, the opportunities that we have. Fun, but let me encourage you to make sure that you are uh, being intentional uh, with what we're doing. Uh, meet folks. Don't just come and sit. Go out and meet some folks. Encourage people. Invite people to come and be a part of what the Lord's doing at Forest Home um, this coming uh, year. So thank you for being here. Uh, we're going to start off uh, this morning in observance of the Lord's Supper. I know many of you have seen that. So this morning, that's what we're going to do. Uh, the Lord's Supper is a special time that we get to remember uh, exactly what the Lord has done for us. We get to partake of that and uh, in remembrance of the sacrifice that was given uh, for the Lord Je to the, from the Lord Jesus Christ to us. So this morning, I just want to read a few verses as we begin. And uh, I'll ask our deacons to come up after we uh, read this. Let's, let's read this. 1 Corinthians chapter 11 says, For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Therefore, whoever eats the bread or drinks this cup of the Lord in an unworthy way shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But a person must examine himself. In so doing, he is to eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For, for the one who eats and drinks, eats and drinks judgment to himself if he does not properly recognize the body. This morning, as we take the Lord's Supper, I want to give us a time uh, for each of us to have a moment in prayer, a time for each of us. Uh, in taking the Lord's Supper is a serious matter. I do ask that only believers partake of the Lord's Supper. If you are visiting with us, we invite you to uh, partake. If you are a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, we invite you to take of the Lord's Supper with us here at Forest Home. Uh, but we want to take some time to uh, set aside to pray to ask the Lord to uh, forgive us of our sin, any unconfessed sin, and uh, a time of just uh, remembrance of the time that the Lord had saved you. So we're going to take a, a little bit of time to do that. I'm going to pray for us. After I pray, our deacons are going to come forward, and we're going to partake of the Lord's Supper together. Let's bow our heads in prayer. God, this morning we, we come as we take of the Lord's Supper this morning. Lord, we do so not lightly, but God, it is a time that we truly reflect on the sacrifice that you made for us the brutality of the sacrifice. God, the love in the sacrifice. God, thank you, Lord, that you willingly gave yourself as a ransom for us. God, that you willingly went to the cross for each and every person. And God, this morning we take it as believers. Lord, to reflect on the time, Lord, that you called us out of darkness. God, you called us into light. God, you, we became a new creation. We became something and someone new. God, even in this moment, Lord, I pray that we reflect on that time. Lord, we thank you, Lord, that we get to take, and God, that we get to remember. It's in Christ's name I pray. 
Amen. I'll ask our deacons to come forward. I ask Brother Scott to give thanks for the bread. Father, we come to you now, Father, this taking a moment thinking of you, your sacrifice for us, your breaking of your body for our salvation. Thank you for the love that you showed for us. Help us always be mindful and careful to give you the honor and the praise and the glory. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Jesus said, this is my body that was broken for you. As often as you do this, do this in remembrance of me. Now we come to taking um, the juice, which is a representation of Christ's blood that was shed for us. Now I'm going to serve Ask Brother Todd, give thanks. Father, as we continue our prayer, Father, we can see you on the cross. Father, as Jesus laid there, he gave his life, his, your only begotten son. Father, we do not take this lightly. We understand that the sins of our fathers and us and our children were put upon you during this time. Father, we ask that you forgive us of our sins, of omission and a commission. And Father, just be with us throughout this day. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Jesus said, this is a symbol of my blood that was shed for you. As often as you do this, do this in remembrance of me. Amen. Let's pray together. God, thank you. God, thank you, Lord, that, um, God, that we can come in this time. God, to reflect on your goodness. God, to reflect how you changed our heart and changed our life. And Lord, this morning as we sing, Lord, we sing because it's a reflection of a changed heart. So, Lord, just uh, use this time to bring honor and glory.
to you. It's in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Scripture tells us that God demonstrated his love toward us and that while we were still sinners, Christ died on the cross. Let's sing at the cross where I first saw the light. Alas, and did my Savior bleed, and did my sovereign die? Would he devote that sacred head for a sinner such as I? At the cross, at the cross where I first saw the light, and the burden of my heart rolled away, it was there. By faith I received my sight, and now I am happy all the day. Was it for crimes that I had done? He rode upon that tree, not made to be That brought us through For as high as the heavens above So great is the measure of our God's love Great is the measure Would you stand please? Think through that again Just think about His love Think about His love Oh, think about His goodness. Just think about the grace that brought us through. For as high as the heavens above, so great is the measure of our Father's comes it's time to take up our tithes and offerings. I ask Brother Ronnie if he'll come and offer our prayer. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this opportunity to come into your house and hear your word. We ask that you watch over all of us. Keep us in your loving arms. Thank you for the time that we get to give to this church to help it continue to strive and seek your word and your love. Forgive us for all our sins. In Jesus Christ's name, amen.
There's a man who lives beside me Who fought in World War II He proudly waves old glory From high upon his roof He starts out every morning Like it's Independence Day I see him at attention Salute the flag and say Got your Bibles, turn to the book of Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11, we will be in verses 13 through 16 this morning. Hebrews chapter 11, verses 13 through verse 16. We are now halfway through uh, our series uh, and looking at faith uh, in Hebrews chapter 11. Um, we've roughly about seven uh, messages so far. And so far, the writer of Hebrews has specifically been working his way through the Old Testament um, individuals in the Old Testament and demonstrating what faith should look like and what true biblical faith is in our life. And hopefully so far, uh, throughout this, those of you who have been here and Maybe you've heard all of them. Maybe there's some of you have heard all of them. Some of you have heard most of them or some of them or maybe your first time. But hopefully um, we look at it and we look at our life and we examine our own life and really see if we have true biblical faith. And so here the writer here in Hebrews kind of takes a break from writing about individuals and he groups Abraham and Isaac and Jacob together. 
and Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob of what we call in the Bible what is called the patriarchs uh, of our faith. And so they are the founding fathers, as you would say, uh, in the Old Testament of what faith uh, looks like. These are the ones that God had given this promise to, right? This promise that God was going to make Abraham this great nation and use him through his son. Remember, Abraham didn't see the promise fulfilled, but God had gave him this promise, and Abraham believed this promise. But there is one thing that all three of these men had in common. They demonstrated and had one aspect of their faith all in common. And the one thing they had was that they always looked forward to heaven. They lived their life looking forward to heaven. This morning, I want to share with you that faith is merely just looking forward to heaven. One of the main ways that we demonstrate our faith, that people can see our faith, is having this longing for heaven. It's not something that you and I can fake. We can't pretend to have this longing. I talk to people all the time, and they're scared to death of this and scared to death of that, and death is uh, merely a... Uh, it's, it's scary to them. But death for the believer is a joyous occasion. It is something that you and I should look forward to. Now, the scary part sometimes is not knowing how we're going to die, right? That's the scary part. But at the same time, God says that you and I and how we demonstrate our faith is that we live our life looking forward to heaven. One of the greatest things that you and I can look at each other and tell if we have faith is whether we long for the things of this world or do we long for the things of eternity. Is our focus on things of this world or do we long for things that are eternal, things that matter Sometimes we put all of our hope and all of our focus in things here on this earth that really don't matter. But there's one thing that will always matter and one thing that will always stand, and that is eternity. Look at Hebrews chapter 11 as we make our way through these verses. Hebrews chapter 11, verses 13 through 16. All these died in faith without receiving the promise but having seen and welcomed them from a distance, and having confessed that they were strangers and exiles on the earth. For those who say such things make it clear that they are seeking a country of their own. And indeed, if they had been thinking of the country which they left, they would have had an opportunity to return. But as it is, they desire a better country, that is, a heavenly one. Therefore God is not ashamed to be called their God, for He has prepared a city for each of them. Let's pray. Father, Thank you. God, thank you, Lord, that your word is true and your word is active. God, your, your word is working in all of our life. God, thank you this morning that our hope is not in this world, but that our hope is eternal, that our hope is in you, the one who holds the future. And God, I pray today that you speak to our hearts. Through your word, in Christ's name I pray. Amen. If this afternoon you got home and you found out that you had six weeks to live, I would expect you to be frightened. I would expect you to be shocked. I would expect you to be dismayed. That is a normal reaction that all of us would have, even for those who are a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. Life is God's gift to you and I. Life is a gift. Therefore, it's only natural that we mourn, that we cry, that we are heartbroken over the loss of someone that we love and that we care about. 
It is normal to, find, to, to have and to feel a sense of disappointment, a sense of regret. But this morning, as a believer that lives your life longing for heaven, looking forward to what heaven has, I would expect you to feel a sense of wonder, a sense of excitement, a sense of joy, a sense of anticipation that, guess what, that you're going to heaven. You're going to be with God. You're going to be with Christ. You're going to be free from sadness. You're going to be free from sorrows, from pain, from hurt. You're going to be ushered into the joy in the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. If you are truly living out your faith this morning, if your faith is active, if your faith is true, if, you're, if people can look at your faith, when you feel defeated, when death comes knocking at your door, you will face death with a sense of hope rather than a sense of despair. You will face this life with a new perspective. You will look at life a lot different than you used to. Verse 13, it tells us that heaven is where God's promises will always be fulfilled. Heaven is where God's promises will always be fulfilled. We see in this verse, in verse 13, it tells us that all these people were still living by faith when they died. They did not receive the things that were promised. They only saw them and welcomed them at a distance. You see, this morning... We look at this verse and we think, now, who are these people? I believe it's speaking of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. And all these people refer to these three patriarchs of our faith. It was to the patriarch, patriarchs that God had given this promise of this nation and the land to these individuals. All three of these men were still living by faith when they passed away, when they died. Because they did not receive this promise. They were still living by faith. God had promised them this. They didn't get to see it. They were still living by faith. And you do not receive this morning. You will not receive all of God's promises while you're here. You will not receive all of God's promises while you're here on earth. That was true for Abraham. That was true for Isaac and Jacob. And it is true for you this morning. For example, Jesus said this in John chapter 11. He says, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever lives and believes in me will never die. We will experience death here on earth. But God has promised us a complete healing from death, from sickness, from illness. But yet we do not always receive healing here on this earth, right? You don't. Some people, you hear you, your wives, your husbands, your kids, your grandkids, friends, family, mom and dad, they die of some kind of sickness. And I would bet to say that you men and you women, sons and daughters, that you prayed for that person, that God would heal them, didn't you? And God chose not to hear, right? But God did choose to heal them. That's the promise. That's the promise that we have. That's faith. We live by faith. We don't receive all that God has promised us while we're here on this earth. Just because you're a believer doesn't mean that you're going to experience perfect health, that you're going to experience prosperity while you're here on this earth. In fact, many of us experience quite the opposite of those things. As many people all over the world as we sit in this A.C., Nobody's busting down our doors this morning. 
Nobody's out, outside protesting. Nobody's out there with a gun saying, if you come in, I, I'll kill you. But all across our world today, there are people. There are believers who are being persecuted because of their faith. They can't meet in a cozy AC. They get to choose whether they come or not. They come because they desire and they love the Lord Jesus Christ and they want to learn. Nobody was out there holding a gun to your head saying, if you don't come, if you come in, we're going to shoot you. Many people all across our world. And God says, hey, you will face those things. But complete healing is when you look forward to heaven. Heaven is where all of God's promises will ultimately be fulfilled. Richard Phillips writes, and he says this, he says, The primary blessings Christianity offers does not lie in this life, but in the life to come. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob were still living by faith when they died because the promise had not happened yet. They had not received this promise. They only saw the promise at a distance. This morning, we only get the glimpses of heaven at a distance. It says this, the second part, the on, they, excuse me, they only saw them and welcomed them from a distance. Although Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob did not get to see their descendants take possession of the land, they did see the land which their descendants would one day possess. They didn't get to see their descendants become a mighty nation. They did get to see the birth of their children. Abraham gave birth to Isaac, and Isaac gave birth to Jacob. Well, actually, Isaac didn't give birth, but he fathered Jacob. And Jacob it became the what? The 12 tribes. His sons became the 12 tribes of Israel. The promises were for the future. They didn't see these promises in their lifetime, but they saw them and welcomed them from a distance. This morning, we can't see all that God is going to do. We only can hold on to what God had promised us, what God has promised us now. We might not be able to see it. We may not be able to see it in our lifetime. But we know God has a purpose and God has a plan. Like Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, we do not receive all the things that are promised in this life. But you can see them by faith. You can see them by faith. You can trust that God is going to do them from a distance. 1 Corinthians 13 says in verse 12, Now we see but a poor reflection as in a mirror. Then we shall see face to face. You should, by faith, look forward to heaven because it is where God's, all of God's promises will ultimately be fulfilled. All of them. All of them. Second of all, this morning, you and I are strangers. We're strangers here. Second reason we should look forward to heaven is because this is not our home. Look at verse 13. The end of verse 13 all the way through verse 16. It says, They admitted. They admitted that they were aliens and strangers on this earth. This morning, if you are a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, you are a stranger. You know Why? Because you don't belong here. You don't belong here. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, they understood this. It says they admitted. Admitted means to agree with. To agree with what someone else had said. Someone else had said. You agree. They admitted that they were aliens and strangers on this earth. They confessed it. They were agreeing with God, right? They were aliens, strangers here walking this earth. God called them, listen, God called them out of the world. And he called them to himself. They no longer belonged here. 
if you feel like you don't fit in and you are living out your faith, there is a good reason. There is a good reason because you don't belong here. You do not belong here. If you fit in, guess what? You probably don't belong. If you don't fit in, <coughs> or if you fit in this morning, if you fit in to the world, you don't belong to Christ. If you fit into the world, you don't belong to Christ. It's a tru- it's, it, that's, a, that's, that's a hard truth. If you act like everybody else, if you don't stand out like a sore thumb, if you're not different, if you don't live your life different, if you don't live your life in faith looking forward to heaven, you're probably lost. As they say, as a, a needle in high weeds. It's going to be tough. There is the difference. That is our faith. People see it. Listen, faith is, is action. People see your faith. People look at you and know if you are of Christ. If they look at you and there is no difference, you are not of Christ. It's really that simple. You don't belong here. And guess what? You can't go back. Abraham, if you remember, Abraham left the city of Ur, which was in Mesopotamia. And he came to dwell in the land of Canaan. And he came to dwell in the land of Canaan because God called him out. Remember? God called him to leave everything he had. The Bible says that Abraham went. But guess what? Abraham's family, where did they live? They lived back in Mesopotamia. The same was true for Isaac and Jacob. And they said, we're strangers. And verse 14 tells us people who say such things show that they are looking for a country of their own. Were they homesick? Don't think so. It says in verse 15, if they had been thinking of the country they had left, they would have had the opportunity to return. It is such an important thing for all of us this morning. We can't, and you shouldn't go back because of your faith, go back to where you left from. I'm not talking about a place. I'm talking about to a life, to a lifestyle. This morning, if you are truly living by faith, guess what? Everything changes in your life. Your speech changes. Where you go changes. Your friends change. Your faithfulness changes. The Bible tells you that you, when you put your faith and trust in Jesus, you become a new creation. Old things are gone, and things become new. That's what the gospel does for you. It doesn't leave you in the same spot. There is no magical prayer. Listen, there is no magical prayer this morning. If you walk down and you thought a prayer was going to save you, you're going to bust hell wide open. If you thought, if you thought a prayer was going to save you. We should be different. You should be different. Everything you do should be different. You shouldn't look and shouldn't act like the world. You should indulge in things of the world. Such an important message. Sometimes we dip back into our old habits and our old ways, but it shouldn't be the same. We're human. You're going to mess up. You're going to, to fall. But when you do, it shouldn't be the same. It's never the same once Christ changes your life. The things that used to bring you pleasure now should make you miserable. Why? Because you're no longer the same person. Man, when Christ saved me, 
He changed me. He changed my heart. I was hard. I was ugly. It took a while for me to work some of those things out in my life. But the Lord changed my heart. He changed my life. He changed my direction. I don't worry about all the things that the world has to offer because one day they're going to pass away. The Holy Spirit lives inside of you. There's an old song that says, I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back and no turning back. Means you can't go back to the way that you were. Your life is changed. When you live here on earth, I know you get caught up in between. You're in the world, but you're not of the world. Man, you get caught up in between. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, they faced the same tension. Mesopotamia was, ne was no longer their home, but neither was Canaan. I mean, they were kind of caught in between. They, they, they looked forward to the land of promise, but they lived as strangers and aliens on the earth now. Verse 16 tells us they were looking for a better country, a heavenly one. They did not belong here, and they knew they didn't belong here. The longing and looking forward to heaven should be a natural response and reaction to every believer here on earth. Colossians 3 says, Set your minds on things above and not on earthly things. Jesus said this in Matthew 6, Do not store for yourselves treasures on earth, but store for yourself treasures in heaven. For where your treasure is, guess what? There your heart will be also. This morning, where is your heart? Is it trapped here on earth? Or is it set upon heaven? The Apostle Paul wrote the book of Philippians. And he says this in Philippians 1.21, For me to live is Christ, and to die is what? Gain. That's looking forward to heaven. To live is Christ, to die is gain. Think, think about it this morning. If, if you, this morning, if you are an unbeliever, if Christ hasn't changed your life, I'm not talking about a prayer, I'm not talking about being dunked in the baptistry. I'm talking about a turn, a 180. That's what repentance is, a turn from your old way to a new way. If you are an unbeliever this morning, then death is the end of all of your hopes and dreams. It is all that you have lived for. But if you are a believer this morning in the Lord Jesus Christ, then death is the beginning of of all your hopes and dreams. All that you have lived for. And so you are filled with this longing for a better country, a heavenly one. Heaven is better than anything. As we read in 1 Corinthians 7:31, the world in its present age, in its present form, is passing away. 2 Peter chapter 3. It is called the home of righteousness. Revelation 21 verse 4 says, There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain for the old, for the old order of things have passed away. Lastly, this morning, heaven is your home. God has prepared this place for you and I. God has prepared this wonderful place. In John 14, it says, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God 
and trust in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If there wasn't, I, I would have told you, he says. I'm going to prepare a place for you. And if I go and I prepare a place for you, guess what? I will come back and I will take you and you can be with me that where I am, guess what? You can be also. If you are a believer this morning, faith simply says, you are living out your faith, it simply says that I look forward to heaven. Because it is where God will fulfill every promise that he ever made. It is because we live as aliens and strangers here on this earth because you and I don't belong here. And because it is our home. God is not ashamed to be called your God. What a beautiful place it will be. The Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians 2, says, no eye has seen, and no ear has heard, and no mind has conceived what God has prepared for those who love him. True biblical faith this morning. True biblical faith means that you are looking forward to heaven. Heaven is not a scary ordeal. It's, it doesn't frighten you when it, when it comes to your mind. Should there be, yeah, should you have some concern when you think about death? Naturally, obs yes, absolutely you would. But when you think about death as a believer, it means that you look forward to all the things that God has promised you. Because guess what, newsflash, you're all going to die. Did y'all know that? I know that's such great news today, Right? From the youngest to the oldest, at some point, you're all going to die. Time gets away fast, amen? It does. Some of you look back and I, you say, I can't believe I'm, I'm 70 years old. I can't believe I'm 90 years old or 50 years old. Seems like only yesterday, don't it? Time goes by fast. This morning, I, I hope and pray that each and every one of you it's truly trusted in the Lord Jesus Christ. And your life is a reflection of that. And you truly long for heaven. Let's pray. Father, thank you. Thank you, Lord, that you are true to your word. God, that everything that you say comes true. There is nothing that you have ever promised that will not happen. God, everything. God, you are a promise keeper. God, thank you, Lord, for the hope that we have in you. God, thank you, Lord, for the faith that we have. It is a faith that is true, a faith that is tested, and a faith this morning that looks forward to the day that we get to be in the presence of of the Lord Jesus Christ. And Lord, I pray this morning that everyone here has trusted in you. And God, if they have not, Lord, I pray that today they will know you. God, they'll put their faith and their trust in you. God, that they would confess their sins and they will believe in their heart that you are the Christ. God, thank you for our time today. It's in Christ's name I pray. Amen. Would you stand as we sing?